What's going on, guys? Welcome to the No Excuses Podcast, episode 18. Guys, it's crazy that today's uh, 18 episodes already. Yeah. Um, it's pretty cool and actually falls on the Jewish New Year. And with the Jewish New Year, Rosh Hashanah, guys, uh, the number 18 is a significant number. Um, it's, a, it's a sign of life. Now, we call it Chai. Chai equals 18. And Chai means, like, life. Um, it's funny because this gym where we're at, um, before I purchased it, um, I knew it was the right one because it was unit 18. <laughs> so in the Jewish religion, when you want to give a gift, you go to a bar mitzvah, you go to a wedding, you do anything like that, it's, uh, you give multiples of 18. Oh, I didn't know right? That. So like, you know, $180 or yeah, 360 yeah. or $18, whatever it is that you want to give. Yeah. Um, so I'm happy to be on episode 18. Guys, I'm honored to have my boy Tarum over here. Guys, these are uh, the main squeeze. Without him, this couldn't be happening. And um, today's episode, man, is the, the journey. We're going to talk about the journey. Um, the journey is, is the journey. I yeah. think we all want to get to where we want to be. Right? Like you would like to wake up in the morning, say, watch a, a Bruce Lee movie. And say, man, I want to be like that. And then get out of your house, walk into the dojo, and boom, you're Bruce Lee. Yeah, immediately, instantly. <laughs> you know, and uh, I feel like we all want that, right? Like, we all see, like, the Lamborghini. I want that. We see a successful business. I want that. We see a successful marriage. I want that. We see all these great things that life has to offer, and we want them right away. And... We'll do anything we can to get there. But none of us want to do the work to get there. Like, ideally, you know, like no one says, hey, I'm going to take the hard route to getting my black belt or to having a lasting relationship or, you know, whatever it is that you want. You know, like you literally just want it. Yeah, I think there's a disconnect between our expectation of what it takes to get something and um, the thing itself, you know, and that could be for like a million reasons, whatever, just because you see, you know, everybody only shows off the things that they already worked for or whatever, and they never show off the work generally. Uh, so I think people's idea or perception of what it takes to achieve something is totally skewed, right. totally skewed. And like their imagination, they're like, I could get that thing in a month and two months or, you know, whatever it might be. Um, and so, like, when you're confronted with the reality of actually trying to do this thing, it's almost like a slap in the face. Like, I right. worked that hard to get this little bit. Right. You know? Right. And, you know, it's kind of like the iceberg effect. Yeah. You know, I'm sure everybody's seen, you know, the picture on the Internet. I actually posted it today, knowing I'm going to be talking about this, is you see the iceberg and then underneath you see this huge iceberg, right? And it says what people see and what people don't see. Yeah. And what people see is the success, the good house, the nice house, the nice cars, the good relationships, the nice body. But they don't see what's underneath the surface of all the sacrifices, all the hard work, all the downfalls, all the, you know, failing over and over and over. You know, all the rerouting that took you to get to that level of whatever it is that you're looking to achieve. You know, so many people, you know, including myself, you know, like we don't want bad things to happen to us. We want to start something and we're even willing to work for it, but we don't want any hiccups. Yeah. You want like a straight path. Right. right. You want a straight path, right? Like you, you ideally in your head is, okay, if I do the right things and I work hard and blah, 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 then it's going to be a trajectory of upwards. You know, and you're just going to keep going up and up and up until you achieve your, you know, desired goal. But it's completely not like that. Yeah, it's not realistic. It's zero like that. And, you know, I even I was talking to um, my sister-in-law this weekend over uh, um, the Rosh Hashanah dinner. And we were just talking about, like, you know, kids. And she was saying, you know, like, I wish my daughter, God willing, you know, is going to listen to us and let us guide her. And I said, it's a nice thought to think that when you have a child that they're just going to do what mom and dad say, but 
They cannot get there. It's impossible. You could be the best parent in the world. They have to go through the stages. Just like a white belt has to go through the stages. You know, you can't just be a black belt at anything. So you're not just going to listen to your parents one day and say, oh, it takes years of failing. Oh, mom and dad don't know what they're talking about. Mom's an idiot. Dad's an asshole. They're annoying. They're pain in the ass. And the kid has to fail. And the kid fails. And then again, mom and dad tried to straighten them out. And then they fail again and again and again. And hopefully they just don't fail and fall off too far that they're able to get back on. And then eventually, a lot of times, mom and dad are already old or mom and dad have passed away where the child has become a man or a woman and says, wow, man, mom and dad really had the best intentions for me. But it's impossible for a child to understand that yeah. at 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 20. You know, like you just can't comprehend the fact that what these people are telling you, you're almost thinking like they're out there to get you. So uh, this is what this whole podcast is about is we must go through these steps, step by step, day by day of falling down, getting banged up, getting off course, failing, but failing forward. Yeah, I think the, the parent analogy is, is really strong there because when you're a kid and um, you, know, you want to do something, it feels like your parents are always telling you no. And in your mind, they're the obstacle in that moment. So if you're thinking about it like a journey, the obstacle in your journey as a kid would be your parents. Correct. And it's only looking back that you see that those obstacles at the time were things that later would propel you forward. You know, right. and it's almost funny that by the time everybody realizes that, it's always, you know, later in life. So, man, I got so many stories to, to share on this podcast that um, all when these stories happened, they were all negative and they were all like downfalls and they were all they all redirected my life. But they had to happen for me to be who I am today. You see what I'm saying? And like, there's no way in the world that when I was, I don't know, 20 years old and I got locked up for fighting and lost my football scholarship and got all into this all trouble that I got to, that at 20 years old, I would think that had to happen for me to make the turn to be where I am today. So what is that story? I don't think I've ever heard that. <laughs> All right. So um, I used to play college football, College of San Mateo in California. Um, I played middle linebacker and fullback. That was some good times. Um, I actually walked on the team, right, uh, which is another great story. Um, in high school, I never really got to play football because I was around gangs, trouble, broke as all hell. Um, anytime I had extra time. I was working or on the street getting into bullshit. You weren't going to be in school doing things like that. I wasn't like going to be in school. I didn't have the mindset, um, but I was always like a badass athlete. And the coaches always wanted me on the team. And I loved football, but like I just didn't have the mindset to, to get there. So as uh, school was ending, um, you know, I used to play a little bit with my buddies and stuff. All, all of them, they're like, bro, they're like, you should be playing ball. And I was like, well, I kind of missed the boat, you know, with high school. Um, but I was like, I could play college ball. And they're like, how are you going to play college ball? I was like, anything I want, I can make happen. Anything. This is at 17, 18 years old. And they're like, how? I'm like, watch. I started contacting all the freaking uh, best junior colleges in the country. Okay. And the best junior colleges for football are in California. And I said to them, hey, guys, you know, I'm a football player. I didn't really play high school football. Um, and they're like, well, where's your tape? I was like, I got none. I said, but I'll fly over there. I'll fly over there and I'll get on the field with you guys. I'll show you what, what I'm about. So um, I had three different colleges I was looking at. And originally, um, I walked on this team called uh, Foothill College. Um, they had some of the best players. Um, these are all kids. People who play uh, junior college uh, football, um, they're all like, most of them are Division One kids with no grades or bad or have bad past, things like that. They didn't take their SATs, you know. And um, I made the team. 
And but I wasn't feeling it there. So then there was another college by my uncle's house in California called College of San Mateo. College of San Mateo Bulldogs. That's where um, Tom Brady played, where he started his career. Um, not Daniel Amendola. What was the other guy that played with him? The short guy. Jewish kid, too. Anyways, I Could forgot have been his name. You. <laughs> he, uh, he also played there. Yeah. Um, long story short, I, get on, I walk on the team, I make the team, and they offer me a scholarship. That's insane. Okay? Never played freaking high school football. Went in there and killed it. Jeez. All right? Um, so everything was good. Um, I'm going to college for free. I'm playing football. Things are great. Uh, it was a holiday. I had to come down to visit my family. And uh, we went downtown Fort Lauderdale. And when we went downtown to Fort Lauderdale, um, we were walking towards like all the nightclubs and stuff. Yeah, a yeah. bunch of buddies and a bunch of guys were walking this way. And a bunch of us were walking this way. And these, I don't remember which friend of mine was, but he started arguing with this group of guys. And I guess they knew each other. They had some beef. And they started arguing. And before I know it, there's a, Brawl breaking out. Yeah, right there in the street. Right there on the street, right on like riverfront, if you know where that is. Yeah. So back in the days, that was like the hot spot. So everyone's fighting. So this big dude, like probably six foot three, six foot four, he swings at me. I move and I just lay this motherfucker out. Boom, lay him out. And then I start fighting everybody. And then I see he was going to get up. So I kick him. And I kicked him in the face. He drops, right? And then I, all of a sudden I hear somebody saying, cops, cops. So everybody starts running. And going their own direction. So I'm like, fuck that. I'm not running. Why am I going to run? I was like, this asshole swung at me. You know, I just beat his ass. Yeah. You know, self-defense. Well, guess what? That's not the way it works. The cops came and they're like, he's on the ground, bleeding. You know what I mean? Laid out. You're here. Nothing's wrong with you. You're going to jail. Um, and they charged me with a second degree felony. Really? Did they charge the other guy? What other guy? Wow. The, the one that was the on the floor. That, yeah. No. Fuck no. They didn't charge him with shit. Jeez. Right? So I'm like, I should have fucking ran. Yeah. But again, if I would have ran, it would have changed my, maybe yeah. I would have been in California and who knows where my life would have been, right? Yeah. So I get locked up. Now, when you get locked up with a second degree felony, you got to get uh, um, bonded out. When you get bonded out, you can't leave Broward County. Okay? Because you're a criminal, technically, until you're proven you know, you're, yeah. Even though you're innocent until you're proven guilty. Yeah, until it's out of court. Until it's out of court, they want to keep an eye on you, oh, right? So now they charge me with a second-degree felony. Second-degree felony is 2 to 15 years in prison, oh, all shit. right? So here I am, this college football kid. I can't go back to California, so I lose my scholarship. I lose my spot on the team. I lose my college, right? I have to stay in Florida. And also, I don't have my uh, citizenship yet. I only have my green card. Now they're threatening me with a deportation. deportation, right? And when you're a criminal and you're not a, a citizen, they want to send you to the, the prison. What the fuck's it called? Um, like Chrome. ICE? Chrome. ICE okay. is the people who arrest you. Chrome. That's where all the fucking immigrants go. Oh, like you see in the movies and shit. Yeah, yeah. And that's where these motherfuckers wanted to bring me, guys. So I had to fucking hire like a really good attorney, Jewish guy. Cohen. And um, any, anyways, man, I had to come up with all this money for the attorneys. Either way, bro, like, thank God I ended up getting out of it. You know, I spent a little bit of time, you know, in the jailhouse in the county. That was funny. That brings another story because when I go in the county, right? So remember, guys, I'm Jewish. Yeah, like, I'm not super religious, but like, I follow the rules. So when you're in the county, they feed you what they feed you. Oh, yeah, so it could have, it's not kosher in it's there. It's not fucking kosher, right? So it's not like I keep 100% kosher, but I keep kosher style, which means, like, I don't eat pork, I don't eat meat and cheese, you know, like, I don't eat shellfish, I don't fucking eat any of that shit, you know what I mean? Like, I follow my own best version of, <laughs> of, of kosher foods. So they give me this plate, and they're like, it's a fucking ham and cheese sandwich. And I'm like, bro. I'm like, I don't eat fucking ham and cheese. So I go, I go to the guard. I'm like, yo, I can't eat this shit. I'm Jewish. I was like, you guys supposed to, you know, like cater to the yeah, people's religion. religion. They're like, no, 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 no. We don't do that shit until you go to prison. 
That's crazy. So like for now, like this is what the fuck you got. So I was like, man, I got to think, right? I got to think outside the box. So I went up to the guy next to me at the lunch and I'm like, listen, bro. I was like, I'll give you the ham every day and I'll get the fucking cheese. We'll do a fucking swap here. All right. <laughs> and I fucking had fucking cheese sandwiches for four days while I was locked up. <laughs> and I remember I got locked up on a holiday. So. Oh, it was extra long then. It was extra long. There. I couldn't just get out, you know, right away. Yeah. And plus, I think my dad kept me there. You know what I mean? Like another day. <laughs> Make you think. Yeah, you know, a day or two just to fucking think about what was going on. But so that was a really funny story. And then same thing when I walked in, um, when you go to the county, there's levels, right? So like if you ran, if you drove without your license, you know, they can arrest you. Yeah. Right. But you're not going to go to the level where the like uh violent crimes are right right you know what i mean so they put me in the level with like murders murderers rapists you know all fucking really bad like violent all crimes dangerous people right like everything. the most dangerous right and until until they get their hearing and go to prison or get out so i get in there and i know the level that i'm in it was level two and you know i'm a big boy you know what i mean i'm like there's no fucking way any motherfucker here. Cause I already, I used to fight anyways. I was like, there's no way any of these motherfuckers are going to run me in the jail. You know what I mean? So you have to put your dominance out from the get go. Yeah. Or then you're going to start getting bullied. So as soon as I walk into the cell, there's this big ass motherfucker over there all fucking jacked. I walk in, I said, listen, motherfucker, I got the top bunk straight up. And he looks at me, he sizes me up. He's like, all right, all right. <laughs> we ended up becoming boys. You know, it's funny. But Away from the jail story, it took me away from my journey to California. It took me away from there. So now I had to start this new journey here, which led me to become who I am today. Led me to become a trainer. Led me to become a full-time martial artist. Led me to become a sensei. I've changed and impacted thousands of lives throughout my career. And that would have never happened if I would have stayed this football player. Maybe I would have been really good and maybe I would have even made it to the pros. But would I have gotten married? Would I have had all these five children that I have? Would I have opened up an academy? Most likely no. You know what I mean? And so, and I'm bringing this up to you guys because when these bad things happen, when that happened, I remember just being like, why? I didn't even, I didn't start the fight. I didn't go to look for a fight. It's like, how did, the guy swung at me. You know, like, how am I the one in jail? Yeah, you're technically not in the wrong. Why are you being punished? Right, like, but it needed to happen. It needed to happen to redirect me. How do you think you were able to, like, like, in that situation, you had your whole life kind of, uh, you know, clear-ish in front of you. You could but, see the direction you were going in. And that is such a, a massive turn, a different trajectory. How are you able to pivot and decide or, like, maybe accept, like, okay, that path is not open to me anymore. I need to find a new one. Like, what was that process like? So it was never smooth, right? It's never like, oh, this happened. And okay, I'm just going to become a trainer. So when that happened, you know, like I got depressed. I got down. Um, remember, like we've talked about before that I used to be in gangs and stuff. Well, guess what? Now you're older, more mature. Now you're not going to go and fucking just throw gang signs out. Now you're going to go into like higher level shit, you know? And I just started getting involved in more fucked up things. I was waiting to play football for uh, FAU. They were starting their football team. And that was my plan. So I was going to go to BCC and then eventually go to FAU and play ball there. I had an interview with the coach, Schlangenberger at the time. And um, he's like, yeah, man, we'll let you go on the team. But we're forming the team now. You have to wait like another year. Yeah. Well, while that was happening, I started playing uh, semi-pro football okay, for a team called Florida Titans. and um, then I injured my knee. Jeez. And I'll never forget when I injured my knee. I fell down. I, uh, I grabbed the grass and I ripped it out. I was like so upset. And I was like, why? Yeah. Why all this shit is happening to me? And I remember I had tears in my eyes. I was like, this is crazy. You know, like here I am trying to do whatever I can to like stay on the right track. But it's constantly pulling me away. I'm constantly getting redirected. And got redirected again and then started going the wrong route. You know, started going the wrong route. And before you know it, you know, I was doing collections for some wise guys, you know, 
which yeah. we'll, we'll leave for another podcast. <laughs> but it, again, took me on the wrong, on the wrong path. Yeah. And when it took me on the wrong path, it, uh, I had to go through different, different trials and tribulations to get a wake up call to say, Hey, this is your path right here. This is your path, which is where I'm at today, today, where my father told me basically like, whatever you're doing, you're going to end up dead in prison. He's like, you need to change your life. And I said, dad, the only thing I, I like to do is play football, work out and fight. And he said to me, why don't you teach people how to work out and fight? And I never thought about it as like to be a coach or a career. I just looked at it as something that I, I do forever. You know, like I love to work out, I love to fight. And um, I quit everything bad that I was doing and changed my life. You know, I went from making thousands of dollars a week in cash, uh, having a sick condo on the beach, uh, Rolex, pinky ring, all the beautiful women, to living back to my parents and getting a job at a gym working for $7 an hour minus taxes. And that was very humbling. And I had to eat a lot of shit. And, but I never gave up. I never gave up. And one trial and tribulation after the other when I was working there. Um, so they don't give you a raise. They don't give you a raise until you complete their certification. At the gym. At the gym. So I already had, you know, two like high level certifications as a trainer and they wouldn't accept them. They're like, you have to do our certification. So I'm like, okay, They're like we're going to fly you out to Colorado. They fly me out to Colorado. Now I go to do the class and my manager forgot my paperwork. <laughs> right. And they're like, sorry, you can't take the class. You need to fly back to Florida. And I was like, you're kidding. And they're like, no, and we don't have the next class for another three months. So now I'm, I'm basically six months in. Well, after that happened, I was going to quit. Again, another trial. I was going to quit and just go back to being a wise guy. And I said, Yaniv, don't quit, man. Don't fucking quit. Like, this is another test for you. And I really wanted to quit because $7 an hour minus taxes sucks dick really bad. <laughs> yeah. And you got to remember, too, like, if you have nothing and you start making 7 bucks an hour, it's one thing. But when you're on top. Right, making all this money, you got all these women, you got all everything is fucked, you're killing it. The comparison is just and then now you're like you've lowered yourself to do the best you can to do the right thing. Um, it's very hard pill to swallow. So um I do so, wait another three months, and then they send me to St. Louis and I complete the the their course and and I start killing it. And before I knew it. In one year, I was one of the top trainers in their country out of 365 gyms. So they offered me a management position. And at that time, it was like 75 grand full benefits. We're talking about guys, 2002, which is like probably like a buck 50 here now, today, yeah, yeah. right? Um, and I said, no. What? And my parents, everybody was like, what are you fucking crazy? And I was like, it's like I'm not a corporate guy, <laughs> you know? And I took out a loan. Um, off my credit card and got together Eddie, all the dollars I had, put it together and opened up my first gym, Cray Fitness Inc., 2003, I think June. Um, and a year and a half, I was fucking start, started my business. And it's funny because when I started my business, I thought like I was just going to have all these clients follow me. But, you know, it's never it never works that way. Yeah. Another trial, another Another test. So now I had to hustle every day, 5 a.m., 9 o'clock at night, 5 a.m., 9 o'clock at night to build the business up and get to where I needed to be. And after a year of straight hustling, I ended up making that 75 grand that they were going to pay me. Obviously, I had expenses, but I grossed 75 grand the first year. And then from there, just kept moving on and on. Wow, that's amazing. So, like, when we're talking about journey and we're kind of, uh, talking about how it's never that straight path. How do you know or differentiate from when something is like a trial on your journey, something you have to overcome versus something that is um, something is uh, almost like a sign to tell you to pivot in another direction? You know, how do you know when something's a trial or when something's like a sign? You know, that's a that's a powerful question, what you just asked now. Um, 
so it's it's a mixture. It's a mixture of when do I redirect or when do I continue on the path. So for example, you know, when I lost my scholarship, it had nothing to do with me, right? Like it wasn't of my doing. Yeah. So it's like, okay, um, this is like, it's, it wasn't done out of my hands. It was like something that just got swept on, underneath me. So, okay, well, let me try. Let me wait. I can't go to California. I have to fight this trial. I have to fight this case. Well, let me play football in Florida. Well, I go to play football in Florida. They don't have a team yet. Okay, well, then I joined the um, semi-pro team. And then I tear, tear my knee. So it's like, sometimes it's like you're almost going against the grain. Yeah. Like you no know, matter how much effort you're putting in, it's like you're going against it. Up. You're going against it. And it's just like the universe is not conceding, conciding with you. Mm. It's like everything you're doing, like there's just barriers that are redirecting you. And I think the only way to make that pivot is after you truly, fully try and give everything you got. Everything. You know, and this goes back to like my coaching. When I coach people, and especially when it's when we talk about like marriage and stuff like that, something that's super important, right? Like, because everybody fights, and we already know that 50% or it's like 55% now of marriages get a divorce. Like, and people when people come up to me and say, Hey, I'm gonna get a divorce, or I am divorced, or whatever, it's like, did you really try? Yeah. Did you try or didn't you try? And I'll say, oh, well, yeah, we tried. Well, how much did you try? Did you try everything in your power? Did you make yourself the best version of yourself? Did you go to therapy? Did you go your, do your date nights? Did you invest in the marriage? Did you do everything in your power and it still failed? If that's the case, then okay, then maybe it's time to redirect. But I just don't believe in just fucking quitting and just switching paths. You know, I think that's a huge problem. And, and, and I think that's, that's one of the reasons people fail the most is because they go on a path, they hit a few obstacles, and then they change directions. You see, I don't mind if, if to get here is my goal. I don't mind going, making a right and going backwards, making a left, making a U-turn, coming back, doing whatever I got to do to get there, but I still got to get there. So the question is, what is there? Well, there is having a healthy body. There is having a good career. There is having whatever, a loving marriage. Well, maybe the person that you're with is, is not the right one. And you're trying and you're trying and you're trying and like sincerely trying. And both people are trying because both people have to try. You can't, right? It takes two to tango. Well, then, okay. Then, then you got to redirect. But your goal is still to have a loving marriage. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's just not a loving marriage with that person. But your goal is still to have a loving marriage. Being successful. Your goal is still to be successful. Maybe it's not successful being, you know, whatever, a restaurant owner. Maybe you're it's to be a coach. Maybe it's to be a teacher. Maybe it's to be whatever, a cameraman. But your goal is still to be successful. And for me, right, like football was being an athlete. I love being an athlete. Well, it didn't work out with football, but it worked out with fighting. I see what you're saying here. It's the, like the definition or what you picture your destination on the journey is. It's like you can't be that attached to a specific thing when it could be the broader reason that you want this thing. Like if you want to be rich, but you want to be rich as like a stockbroker, um, those are like two different things. Because if the only reason you want to be a stockbroker is to be rich, right. there's a lot of ways to be rich. Right. So it's almost like you replace, you're, you're not having something concrete as your destination, but more like an idea or just like a place that you want to be. Uh, and it doesn't matter how you get there. And that's kind of how you're able to to pivot to different things. Right. Correct. You're Correct. like opening, like, allowing other paths to come through. 
Right. You know, so like when COVID happened, you know, um, I had one of the biggest jujitsu gyms in uh, Broward County. Um, we got shut down. We lost 70% of their students within like a month. It's like unheard of, right? You always lose a few people and gain a few people. And that's just the name of the game. So it's like, I couldn't do my privates. I couldn't do my jujitsu. I couldn't teach any classes. My livelihood was shut down. So again, what do I do? What do you do? Do you just fucking hide under a rock? Do you fucking put a bullet to your head? What do you do? You know what I mean? So started making American flags. Am I a carpenter by trade? No, but I'm good with wood. And I needed something to, to do to occupy my mind. And I needed to provide a service, something to people. I remember that was a very sensitive time where like there's people were fighting a lot, politics, all the shit. And the American flag was like a sign of freedom. It was a sign of like of hope. And I got to share that with people. So I started selling American flags, right? And and I would get one DM after the other. Hey, can you make me one? Can you make me one? Can you make me two? Can you make me? Before you know it, I had my whole family. All we were doing is making flags all day. <laughs> and it was pretty cool. I called the company Rise Up Flags. If you would have asked me a year before that, hey, you need, you're going to start a carpentry car- company. I'd be like, are you on crack? That was <laughs> never going to happen. Yeah. Right? But it happened. You know, I put it in a back burner because the gym was able to open back up and everything like that. But um, I was able to make some money, feel fulfilled, and, and grow as a human being through that experience. And if you ask me today, would you have changed that? No, I wouldn't. I'm glad I went through that experience. And I think this is like the whole core of this podcast is not just about, hey, your journey is going to be difficult and you need to continue moving forward. That's not even what the podcast is about. The podcast is about that the journey is all the turns. Like you're going straight. Like, hey, I'm going straight. Like, no, you're not. You're going right. Yeah. You know, we're, the, the, everything is the journey. Everything is a journey. And everything is like something that you didn't expect. You know, like I started doing firearm lessons. So like I was always good with shooting. You were one of my students there. Right. right. Um, and my buddy reaches out to me. He goes, you need He goes, why don't you become an NRA instructor? Like, NRA instructor? He's like, yeah, man, you're good at shooting. And he's like, the government didn't sh- shut that shit down. Why don't you? So I was like, okay. And I went, I took the course, I killed it, I aced it. I literally got 100% on all the tests and um, became an NRA instructor. Started giving firearm lessons. Just like, like that. Just like that. You know, like, and again, you would have asked me here before, like, hey, are you going to be a firearm instructor? Like, hell no. Like, I carry a firearm because for self-defense and, you know, but that's it. Like, I'm not. It's we've, not like your passion. Or right. Anything. We've talked about it before. Where, like, you asked me, like, do you go shooting? Like, no, nah, I don't go shooting. Like, I don't really. It's not my thing. I'm good at it, but it's yeah. not my thing. But I wouldn't change that experience. You know what I mean? The, the moments that I got out of it, the, the knowledge that I got out of it. And these are all things that I'm telling you, you know, like, people don't go into relationships. Like. How many girlfriends have you had? Three. Three serious ones. Yeah. Have you ever went into any of those relationships hoping that you're going to break up? No. <laughs> right? Like when you met this person, you're like, oh, wow, they're cool. Yeah. They're beautiful. They're fun, whatever. I want to be with this person. Right. And maybe in the back of your mind, maybe you're like, oh, maybe I want to marry this person. And then for whatever reason, it didn't work out. And... It sucked that it didn't work out, right? But then out of nowhere, you're like, oh, wow, here's this other person. Yeah. And then again, and same feelings and journey, and then yeah. it redirected again. Some people redirects a bunch of times. Some people directs two, three. So it doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. The bottom line, what I'm trying to say is all those things are your story. And all those things are your experience. And all those things that happen to us, if it's with business, with relationships, with our bodies, with everything, that's what creates us who we are. You know, like, how we respond to all these things. You know, like, and I think that's what makes the difference between successful and not successful people. We all get dealt 
you know, like, like think of a hand of, you know, like of, of cards where like, oh, I have one good one. I have four shitty ones. What am I going to do with this? Right. And you play your deck as best you can until you get the next deck, the next game. Right. But each deck has had its own game, had its own experience, had its own vibe to it, had its own energy, had its own lessons. You know, um, you weren't a student here when I tore my knee, right? No. Right. So another huge story to share. Um, I was competing a lot at Black Belt. I was doing really well. Um, I won the uh, Florida States at Black Belt. This uh, is when you had the Crave Gym, right? The, the, the really gym. big one. Before yeah, the this really one. big one. Yeah. You know, I was the state champion Black Belt. Um, um, my weight class in absolute. But my knee was giving me a lot of problems. My, my right knee. From the football incident. Just throughout the years of training. Yeah, yeah. Right? Like just wear and tear. Right. So it started slipping out a lot, my kneecap. Anyways, I went to go do the Miami Open. I go to fight. I pull guard. And my knee um, dislocates. Oh, right? Now, you know me, guys. Like, I'm very, like, tough. And I, it's a big thing into honor. So I keep fighting with my knee being dislocated, right? I don't say anything. The guy's going super hard on me. And like, I'm trying to keep it together in hopes that maybe my knee will like pop back, back in. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just pretending nothing is going on. But inside, I'm like dying. And the guy's fucking me up. And he passes my guard. He ends up choking me. And I remember getting up and I just wanted to cry. You know, like, not that I lost, but that I, like, the way I lost, like, I was in a bad place. My, I wasn't healthy. Like, I should have just tapped when that happened and just called it a, game, a day. But anyways, um, I needed to go have surgery, a massive surgery, a, a complete. It wasn't just my knee wasn't just sliding out. Um, I had a torn meniscus. I had another torn ligament. I had to basically do almost like a complete like knee reconstruction. reconstruction. And I had to do it. I had no choice. I did it. And that was a really tough time for me, man, because jujitsu was such a big part of my life. It was almost like my whole life. It was basically my family and jujitsu. That's it. And when I tore my knee, like, man, brother, I got depressed. You know, um, I couldn't work out. I couldn't fucking do anything. I had this big ass cast, you know, brace. Yeah. Um, it, it, it was very bad, very, very bad. And the pain level was through the roof. And I don't like to take pen, pain meds because they make me dizzy, right? So I couldn't take the pain meds because when I take the pain meds, I'll get dizzy and I feel like throwing up. So I'll just be in fucking severe pain, level 1,000. And I didn't know what to do with my day because my day involves coming here in the morning, doing private lessons of jujitsu yeah. or some type of martial art. Were you still teaching when you had the cast and everything and you were recovering? Like, were you teaching uh, lessons or? No, no. So listen, so I couldn't, right? Like I, I had crutches. I had this big oh. ass thing on my leg. I was all fucked up, right? So my day consisted of privates and then at nighttime teaching kids and adults classes, right? Striking and everything. Couldn't do anything. All of it. So you basically took my, it took my identity away. And I got into a really dark place, man. I'm not going to lie to you, tell you that like, that like I was like happy go lucky. I even like questioned even being alive. It's like what the fuck am I doing here if I can't even do this? Like your purpose was taken away. It was taken away. So one day I was in so much pain, man. Like I just wanted to fucking pull a bullet in my head. I rolled over, and I just started doing push-ups from pain on one leg, and just fucking start knocking out push-ups. And I did push-ups until I couldn't do push-ups anymore. And the, every push-up I would do, the pain in my knee started going away. More and more and more and more. And then eventually, every time I got pain, I started doing push-ups. And the pain started subsiding. But I still needed something to occupy me. So two things. I was like, one, I got to go to the academy and I got to teach as best as I can, sitting on the sidelines, having other people demonstrate, me just verbally talk. And two, I need something challenging. So I started learning to play chess. And Never played chess in my life. Uh, 2018, this is when it happened. And um, 
Today, I'm like a purple belt in chess, you know, really good in fucking chess. Self-taught, I play every day. And now if you ask me today, hey, we'll take chess away from you. We'll only give you jujitsu back like how you had it. Um, would you would you do it? Absolutely not. Tear my knee. Put me through so, a whole fucking motion. Jujitsu before while you were still teaching and competing versus jujitsu plus chess. Correct. Jujitsu and chess all, jiu-jitsu all the way. Jujitsu and chess. Because what it did, the room, is it showed me that I had other things in my life. You know, sometimes you might put like just one person, like, let's just say you're my wife, and you're like, or you're, I'm your husband, and like, hey, like you're my everything. Well, if that person just pivots a little bit, it like shatters you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or your job is everything. And for whatever reason, a hurricane comes, shuts down your business. If your whole identity is just attached to that career, that job, your whole identity is just attached to whatever that is, your profession, your sport, your child, you're fucked, man. Yeah. Because sooner or later, there's going to be a hiccup. Yeah. It might not last forever, but there will be a hiccup. And the question is, are you going to be able to keep yourself together while this hiccup is happening? So, again, going back to, to our journey is that we need, we need these hiccups because they create the person that we need to be. I could not be sensei. I cannot be this life coach. I cannot be this wise person that I am today without all these ass beatings and without all these redirectionals that life has thrown at me without me asking for it. Yeah. It's not like, oh, I want to go through that hardship. No, I don't want to. I didn't want to get my knee torn. I didn't want to have my businesses shut down. I didn't want to go to jail. I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to almost get divorced. I have a million stories of these I can tell you, by the way. But we'll keep them for throughout the podcast, right? But I didn't want any of them. But they were given to me without my permission. See, it's like you almost have to get forced to get thrown in the ocean. Learn how to swim, motherfucker. And you drown and you figure it out. And you swim and you pedal. And then you get out. You're like, fuck, now I know how to swim. Throw me in the ocean, bitch. I don't give a fuck. I'll swim all day. Yeah. Right? Whatever it is, you're forced to adapt, learn, grow. Let me ask then, was there a time, because we were, we were talking about how looking back, yeah, it makes sense. Like all these uh, pivots and failures and stuff, they make sense. You're happy for them, even grateful. But was, did there ever come a time where you stopped reacting to bad things in your life like, oh, why is this happening? Uh, and you were able to, in the moment, accept that this is uh, a, a hiccup that has to happen and immediately pivot to how can I benefit or gain or what can I learn from this bad thing happening? 100% as I grow, as I've grown, you know, who I am when I was 20 and who I am when I was 25, 30, 35, 40, you know, now I'm going to be 44, is a completely different human being. You know, I can take on a lot of L's, losses, a lot better than when I did when I was 40, a lot better than when I was 35, and so on and so on, because the wiser you get, the more of understanding of life. So I'll give you an example. Like death. Everybody wants to what? Live Nobody wants to die, right? Yeah. Unless you're fucking suicidal, yeah. nobody wants to die. Like, you yeah. want to live. But what you don't realize is that death is part of life. So we're going, we're going all the way to the deepest part right now. Death is part of life. Well, as long as you don't accept it, you'll always fear it. If you accept it and understand it's part of life, then you'll work with it. Okay. Same thing. Loss is part of life. The the downfalls is part of life. You know, like I day trade. Look at any stock. Never in the history of any stock in the world has it ever just gone up. It goes up. It goes down. There's months it's just fucking down. And there's months it's just going up. There's days where it's extremely up. There's days where it's extremely down. Well, as a trader, if you look at trading, you're like, 
It's down. Oh my gosh. You know, you sell everything. You lose your shit. You know, so you have to understand that about life. And that comes with wisdom. And that comes with like perseverance and, and being able to take a beating, not lose hope. And again, nobody wants to take a beating. No one ever went to like a fight and said, I want to get my ass kicked. Tournament, I want to lose. Whatever, marriage, I want it to fail. No one ever went through it. No one ever said that. But when you go through that and then you realize, fuck, this sucks. But let me keep pushing forward. Let me keep moving forward. Let me see what I can learn from it. Let me see how I can grow from it. Let me see what lessons I can take from it. Then now you become wiser, smarter, and you just leveled up in life. And now you can handle that downfall without selling the whole stock or getting rid of that relationship or quitting altogether or whatever. You know what I mean? It's just you learn to take things a lot better because you're a lot more mature and wise and understanding of life. Like someone, you know, we talked our last podcast about transparency. Well, at 18 years old or at 25 years old, at 30 or five years old, you know, um, if you're a woman and you think your husband never looks at another woman, you know, like you're stupid. Doesn't work that way. You know what I mean? But to understand, oh, okay, he's a man. Or she's a woman. She's going to look. He's going to look. You learn to, you, you're not happy that they're looking. No one wants to like, hey, yo, right? Like, or whatever it is. But you. Accept it. You learn to accept it. Yeah. Like with a grain of salt. Like it's not, it's not that big of a deal. So when you tear your knee or you injure yourself or you had a bad month or you had a bad day trading or you had a bad fight with your wife or you had you got fired from your job or whatever, you understand it's not the end of the world. You understand that you had to, you had to spend that time there. That you had to, to grow to the person you need to, to become. You know, we've done on the podcast about being a 10.0 version. You cannot become 10.0 without these redirectionals of ups and downs. There's, there's one last thing that uh, I'm curious to know what you think about um, in regards to the journey and the hiccups and the failures. Um, after getting to a point where you're able to kind of take the hits on the chin and you can, you're more tolerant to the, the difficulties, the failures and stuff, did that change the way you look at the wins any differently or when things are not going bad or things are going good? Uh, do you perceive those any differently because you are more tolerant of the failures or the losses? So number one, I'm much more appreciative of the wins. And the first win of my day is waking up every day in the morning. When I wake up in the morning, that's my biggest win. I open my eyes. I'm like, okay, I'm not dead. I got one more day. Boom. That's my first win. I look around. I see my family. That's another win. I see I have a roof over my head. That's another win, right? So as the wiser you get and the more you understand how life can change directions at any given moment, you one million percent look at your wins differently because you appreciate them more because you know for a fact no one stays winning forever, right? You know, like even here on the mat, right? Like I'm the toughest guy on the mat here. I'm the most skilled. I'm the most trained, so on and so on. But I'm... I'm going up in age, right? And I'm doing everything I can to stay fit and work out and exercise and eat right and keep training. But there will be a day where, God willing, I'm 50. Well, the kid who's been training with me, you know, since he's 12, right? And now I'm 50 and he's 19, right? Like our skill levels are going to start. He's peaking his athleticism where mine is going down. I'm doing everything I can to keep it up. But then now I'm 55 and he's 23, right? 24. Well, now I'm 60, right? So like you have to understand being the king of, of anything will only last for so long. You know what I mean? Whatever it is. 
So you got to constantly nurture it and, 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 and give it the best you can. But at the end of the day, nothing is forever. Nothing is forever. Not your loved ones. Not you. One day, you will go to the other side. So when these losses happen, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't let them steal my soul away and because I know there is tomorrow. Even if tomorrow, I, even if I'm not going to be here, there'll still be tomorrow. I right? like tomorrow always comes, with you or without you. You know what I mean? So whatever it is that's going on in your life, take it on the chin. It sucks. I'm not telling you it doesn't suck. It's heartbreaking. Um, it might be even devastating. But if you can understand that you needed to go through that, to change, to overcome, to become who you needed to be, then it's just part of your fucking journey, if you like it or not. You know what I mean? And I explain, you know, like, you know, I have my kids, right? They're all born into this jujitsu family. Technically, right? Like, I could be like, hey, guys, here's a black belt, right? But I steal from them. I steal from them their whole journey. Their stories of white belt, you know, being crazy. Their stories of blue belts. Their injuries that they're going to get. The, the hits in the mouth. The cracked tooth. The cauliflower ear. You know, the, the skin infection. The friendships that they made. You know, all these different things that happen here on these mats and in competition. You steal all that from them by just, even if I was able to, like the Matrix, here's a black belt and turn into you into a black belt. You steal that from that person. So you need all that. You know, I'm always the most interesting person in the room because I have so many downfalls of stories. Like people are like, holy shit, do you ever catch a break? Like, no, I don't. <laughs> you know, but it's okay. I never gave up. I kept pushing forward. I learned my lesson. And here I am today. When you see people that are not successful, they fell in that pothole and never changed. They fell in that pothole and never redirected. They never went around. They never went over. They never went under. They went again and again the same route and failed and failed and failed until it took their soul away, until it broke them completely, until it made them into a drug addict or a loser or just, you see some people are like, how many times you're married? Four times. Like, bitch, you never fucking learned the first time, second, third. Like, yeah. what's going on here? That's because the people don't learn. You know what I mean? And, and guess what? Until you learn your lesson, you want to believe in God, the universe, karma, whatever, they'll put you right back in that lesson again. There's no cheating it. You didn't learn the lesson? No problem. Let's put you there again. So, you know, when, when I was going through my gangs and, and, and organized crime, all these things. The first arrest, I didn't learn my lesson. Got arrested again. Got arrested again, again. So you might look from the back, you're like, he's a stupid motherfucker. Like, yeah, stupid as fuck. How many ass beatings do you need to redirect? Right? Yeah. So how many times do you have to fall in the same pothole? It looks different, but it's still a pothole to learn your lesson until you able to recognize it and change your habits and your and your your decisions you're going to fall in love again with the same asshole the same fucking cunt the same bullshit over and over again and you're going to have the same outcome you know what i mean ah you know my life sucks no you, you just, suck you never learn you suck right and nothing is going to change you know and um uh, this is what it is this is what it is powerful stuff yeah man it is very powerful and um to everyone who's listening like whatever it is that you're going through just understand it's part of your journey because you needed that lesson you, if you're in jail right now you needed that you're in a breakup you needed that you're you're struggling at work you needed that um you're fighting with your your girlfriend boyfriend husband wife you need that because it's either going to make you break and change and make things better or make you find somebody else. Either way, you need to change, make things better, or you need to find somebody else. You have to do something. Yeah, like, you know, all the time, man, like, I've always had, like, really, really big heart. I still do. And it's hard for me to, like, it goes against me to cut people out. 
I've done it and I do it, but it's hard for me. It's not natural. Okay. And every time I've done that, like when someone tried to cut me out of their life, you know, I was like, ah, you know, like I didn't want it and they did it. I was like, thank you. You know, like you needed to get that hurt to make the change. Because some people are so good that unless they get so fucking hurt and they get spit on, they'll still stay there and get their ass beat more and more and more. And they'll just be basically get abused. You know what I mean? Oh, shit. I get the cramp. <laughs> <laughs> so God. <laughs> and my time might be coming up. <laughs> so, 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 so God says to you, hey, um, train too hard today. So God says to you, hey, I'm going to hurt you so bad that you can redirect. So whatever it is you guys are going through, just understand that. You need that pain. You need that setback. So the comeback will be greater. Oof. Guys, with that being like said, that. we're going to wrap up. Um, episode 18 was sick. I love this new format that we're doing. Yeah. Um, get to really talk in depth, in depth of uh, what we're talking about. And um, guys, please like, share, subscribe. And um, remember... You need any help leveling up your life, you know, check out my No Excuses program. Guys, for getting fit, nutrition, mindset, life coaching. If you're around uh, Broward County and you want to come train jiu-jitsu with us, uh, you want to come to our fitness classes, come check us out at uh, wirejujitsu.com. And other than that, guys, make sure you follow me on uh, Instagram, Rosenberg one And thank you very much, guys. Usa. Usa.